Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. Today is the next video in our series of electrical do's and don'ts. This one is relays and fuse taps. Let's check it out. So it's the holiday season. I'm gonna start off on a positive rather than a negative. Let's start off with the do's. Do use relays. They are integral to electrical systems in cars. If you're running a fuel pump, an electric fan, any heavy load pulling system needs to have a relay in there to operate properly, get clean power and safety of those circuits. Now, what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about these simple little black boxes, usually with five terminals on them. Those are the most common ones you'll find on cars and they can really be used to create some magical circuits. Of course, it's not magic. It's just electrical sciences, electrical engineering, but you can really do some interesting stuff. You can change the direction of powers flowing. You can cut off circuits when you want to, start them up when you want to. There's a lot of things you can do. I'm not gonna dive too deep into telling you how you can really get crazy with relays. I'm just going with the basics here. Use them. So let's say you wanna eliminate the mechanical fuel pump on your engine. You're looking to clean up your engine bay a little bit and streamline things. So you take that electrical pump and you mount it up to your frame rail, you wire it to the key, and you fire it up. It works. It probably will work depending on how you wire it. But just straight running power from your key to your fuel pump is not the way to go. First of all, of course, you need circuit protection in the form of a breaker or a fuse, but even more so than that, you should have a relay. You need to think about reducing the distance that that voltage has to travel. So power is coming from your battery. It's going to your fuse box. It's going from your fuse box to your ignition key, or it's going from your ignition key to your fuse box, depending on how the circuit's wired up. And then now you've got to send that power from either the fuse box or the key to that fuel pump through a fuse, get it to that pump and run the pump. Well, that's straightforward and it will work. A lot of people like to do this in race cars and I don't agree with it, but it has worked for a lot of people for a lot of time, but there's a way better way to go about doing it. The proper way is to use a relay. Now the idea with the relay is you want to go ahead and wire it up so now when you turn that key on, instead of powering up the fuel pump, you're powering up a relay or you're providing ground to a relay so that that relay kicks on. Now that relay takes direct power from the battery with a fuse of course, directly to that load source, the fuel pump, the electric fan, whatever it is you're trying to power up. It isolates that high current circuit. Some of these fuel pumps can be pulling 20, 30 amps for nice strong pumps. You don't wanna be running that through your key. You don't wanna be running that directly through your fuse box unless it's got circuits really rated for that. A lot of relays on cars are rated for 30 amps, 35 amps, 40 amps. So when you're running those heavier load systems, well, they can provide nice clean power direct from the battery to that load. So you can also use relays to clean up electrical circuits that are already existing in cars, especially something, an older generation where they weren't really using relays at that point. An example of this that I can think of is a Lincoln Continental I had before. Customer complained that the power windows on the car, being like a 1966 I believe it was, one of the old square boxy ones, the slabs. Well, the problem with that car was that the windows went real slow. They'd creep up and they'd creep down. I put new power window motors in it and it slightly improved, but it was still really slow, especially by today's standards. A lot of folks take what they know about the car that they drive every day today and they apply it to their old cars. And it's not necessarily the greatest thing to do because a lot of systems don't work the same. And this is one of those cases. How that car was originally wired was power came from the battery through the fuse box to the power window switch and directly to the motor. That switch, that wiring, it was all a little old. And in that case, you powered it up and you did not get full battery voltage to the power window motor. The simplest thing I could do to fix this was I wired up relays. So when you flip the switch, instead of powering the motor, it powered a relay. Now the relay pulled clean, direct battery voltage from the battery right to that power window motor and provided it with exactly battery voltage for a nice strong power supply. It provided clean power and those windows went flew up and down. They worked like they probably did the day it rolled off the assembly line in 1966, if not better. So relays can really help you save circuits from being overloaded. They can help you to operate equipment properly so it gets good clean power and functions better than it would running through a whole bunch of different steps. And they can help you do some tricky things. You can reverse voltages, you can provide all kinds of different safety mechanisms with them. 
that's a topic for another day, which I may well get into because I have a few instances coming up where I might actually have to wire things a little tricky with some relays. So now let's get to the negative here, the don't. Well, today's don't is fuse taps. What are fuse taps? Well, what I'm referring to is these things here. They are a design where you'll pull out a fuse, you'll stick one of these in there, you can put the fuse back into the circuit, and now you've got a pigtail jumping off of your fuse box to power up a different circuit. So you've added an easy way for you to wire into a circuit. Now this is gonna be one of the rare times where I'm telling you a don't, where they could serve a purpose and they could function well in some situations. However, I find more often than not they're improperly used, so I'm gonna list them as a don't. The problem with these things is circuit overload. Say you pull a 10 amp fuse out of your radio circuit. You plug that fuse holder into there, you jump that pigtail off of there, and now you power up an MSD ignition box because you didn't have anywhere else to run for a nice key power off of your fuse box. So now that load that you've added to the circuit is going to want its own set of power. It's going to want to have a 5, 10, 15 amp circuit fuse on its own. So what do you do? Do you put the 10 amp fuse back in that the radio wanted, or do you put the 15 or 20 amp one that you might well need now on that circuit? Well, most folks are gonna go ahead and put that bigger fuse in there because, well, they need that more power now. There's a serious problem there, and that is overloading the base circuit. The circuit that was there originally, that radio circuit, was set up and engineered for that 10 amp fuse. So now, when you put that extra load on the circuit, you put that bigger fuse in there, the circuit protection is damaged because now you have a larger fuse that's not gonna pop when that circuit was intending it to, and you're gonna increase the overall load on the circuit. So you run a really serious risk of overloading that circuit and burning up the wires, burning up your radio, burning up whatever load devices you have on that circuit. Systems are generally engineered so they run specific situations that they are designed for. You don't just pay back as many things onto one circuit as you can because, well, it's there and it's easy for me to tag into. You need to think about breaking down circuits as much as you can. That's why I really like things like the Highway 22 wiring harness that I showed you in the last Electrical Do's and Don'ts videos because it has a lot of circuits in there for you to tag off for those different loads that you're going to be running. Like I said, these could serve a few purposes. I don't want to get too deep into those, but one point where they could be fairly useful is something like I talked about before, relays. Now, the idea there is, say you've got an electrical fan that you want to run on a switch. While I don't recommend necessarily doing that, and I have a whole video about electrical fans and how to wire those up and run them properly with controllers, if that's what you want to do, you want to run it on a switch, say it's a race car, an off-road vehicle, and that's how you want to run it. That's fine in some instances, one of these taps will be useful for that. What you do is put the tap in there, keep the circuit at the same 5, 10 amps, whatever it was before, and run it over to your switch. Now you've got fuse power to your switch for your fan control system. And what you're going to do is use that switch to now provide power to a relay. The relay will actually control the load and send the power to the fan, whatever circuit you're trying to control, whatever load it is. You haven't really added much at all. The nice thing about relays, going back to the dues, is that it has a low power circuit and a high power circuit, a low amperage draw and a high amperage draw. So all you need is that little bit of power to have that relay function going through that switch, pulling off of that circuit, and it'll provide heavier power off the other side of the circuit, the load side of the circuit, to the load device. That means you really haven't increased the load on that original circuit much at all. I hope this makes sense to you. It can get a little tricky, and I probably shouldn't have mixed up some do's and don'ts here, but they actually kind of do cross over pretty well. Basically, don't use these wire fuse taps if you're intending to run a load off of them. If you're looking to power up something, it's gonna pull anything more than a few milliamps of power. I do not recommend using these at all. However, if you're just running something like a relay, a really small circuit, a really low power circuit, then they can serve a function there. All right, folks, I hope you found this video interesting. I hope it wasn't too confusing. If you need any clarification on things, let me know in the comments down below. Go ahead and like this video if you found it informative and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the near future. Thanks for coming around, folks. Have a good one.